Hi and welcome to another episode of Ask Kanti. In uh, today's episode, I'm going to talk about how to identify fraud profiles or fake profiles on uh, matrimonial platforms. Now, by fake profiles, I don't really mean people who are there on these platforms, although they don't really want to get married. Okay, I'm talking about fraudsters, scamsters, people who uh, are basically not being honest about who they are on these platforms. Okay, so I'm going to take you through the approach that I normally follow for my clients in terms of doing some sort of basic checks to wet that this person is genuine and ca can be trusted and you know the information that they've provided on this platform is 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 more or less authentic. So what I normally do is I don't really bother checking um, every single profile that I look at. It's only if and when there is a match. At that point of time, I do some basic checks. Now, you can start with a simple Google search of uh, the person. You will have some information about their name, uh, let's say the place where they work, the college they went to or the city that they live in. So use all of this information to just do a simple Google search. When you do a simple Google search, you at least in the first five, six pages uh, of search, you should be able to find something about these people, right? Um, if you don't find anything about these people, um, it's something to be slightly concerned about. I understand that not everybody is on social media or has information scattered about themselves on the internet. But having said that, most people will have at least some information about themselves, right? So do a simple Google search. And also one of the other things that you must verify is the location that the person has mentioned. A lot of people like to say that they are based in the US or some other foreign country. But if you look at the number that is provided, um, may not be a US number. Now, it is possible that they've given someone else's number who is, uh, you know, based in uh, India, for instance. But if somebody is saying, hey, this is my number, this profile is managed by me, and they give you an India number, you want to be a little bit careful about it. If you don't feel confident about, you know, how genuine the person is, just uh, make sure you carry out a conversation, ask questions, clarifying questions on the platform itself before you take the conversation offline let's say you know you're sharing your number or you're contacting them on the number that's provided these platforms um, are filled with fraudsters and scamsters uh, most of these platforms do uh, checks in terms of um, mobile numbers or email addresses or you know sometimes they even verify by visit but it's impossible to keep this 100% clean because, you know, there are thousands of people signing up on these platforms on a daily basis. And uh, there are some basic checks and processes in place. But of course, people have found a way to get around that as well. So you want to try and be careful and as vigilant as possible whenever you're interacting with somebody on these platforms because... Um, Already you're taking a huge risk in terms of who, uh, you know, you want to spend the rest of your life with. So you want to try and avoid any sort of trivial mistakes you can make in terms of uh, verifying whether the person that you're about to speak to is genuine or not. Because you don't want to fall into trouble by uh, speaking to someone that you can't trust. One other simple hack on these platforms to figure out if someone's genuine or not without having to go through this elaborate search is uh, if you feel that somebody is sending you an interest uh, unexpectedly, what I mean to say is going out of, let's say, the specified age group or specified language or specified location. If you feel like somebody that you absolutely did not expect is sending you uh, an interest, um, you are justified in sort of doubting that interest. You want to try and check before you accept such a request. Now, it is quite possible that someone is so open-minded and you know they don't mind sort of um, sending an interest to someone like you. But if it's too good to be true, it's usually too good to be true. So these are some of the simple uh, checks that you can do. Beyond all of this, if you still feel underconfident uh, in terms of contacting them you have a strong feeling that they might be genuine but you're not 100 percent sure call them from um, a public telephone booth uh, to make sure that you're not providing any personal information to them um, 
um so that you know if if you feel so worried right or or call from a relative's phone for instance so you want to try and be as careful as possible but you know do all of this only once you match with somebody you don't have to worry about this till you match with someone while you're just looking at profiles on these platforms so i hope this was helpful and uh, you will use this simple check uh, going forward uh, while verifying profiles on platforms uh, when you match with somebody so good luck <laughs>